truth that he had been taught when he taught in Matthew's the fifth chapter on the sermon in the mouth when he said you have heard asking for forgiveness for people might think that Jesus was just asking forgiveness for the religious leaders and Judas uh, and the ones responsible for actually nailing Jesus to the cross. Uh, but in actuality, can I enlighten you now? It was to the cross. Uh, I believe Jesus looked down uh, over the annals of time uh, and he saw uh, Ida May Reed in Baltimore uh, in 1958 uh, on a cold Tuesday in December, y'all not pray with me, and saw that Michael Reed would need a Savior. And for that reason, Jesus went to the cross. I heard an old songwriter say he would not come down from the cross just to save himself. But he decided to die just to to save me. We were responsible because of our sins. That Jesus was nailed to an old rugged cross. Yeah, you and I are responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus. We knew that Jesus was the Savior of the world. If they knew who it was that they were nailing to the cross, they would have let him be because Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, God my praying with me, I'll draw all men unto me. If they had any sense, if they knew better, they would not have crucified my Jesus. But because he was nailed to the cross, he nailed my sin. He nailed your sin to the cross of Calvary, and because of His blood, God, I pray with me. Because of His blood, oh, His blood, it was nothing but the blood that saved me. The blood that rose to the highest mountain. The blood that rose to the lowest mountain. The blood that gives me strength. From day to day, the blood will never lose his power. And a secondary scheme, but it was the plague of the Lord to redeem. Father, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. God bless you. Pastor Michael Reed, the Dean Christian Fellowship, is coming with the second word tonight. Pastor Joanne Halley, so glad that she is with us. Amen. Amen. We do give honor to God, to the Holy Spirit, and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you so much, Pastor Butler, for this uh, opportunity and for my president. Uh, Tucker for uh, encouraging me and for asking me to come. Lord, we thank you again for this day, for this opportunity. We never take this opportunity. And here we are with the Message Bible again. <laughs> then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter the kingdom. He said, don't worry, I will. Today you will join me in paradise. Yeah. And if I was to put a subject to this message. I just want to for a few moments on the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Last week, the last week of Jesus' life is an amazing story. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Starting with this last Sunday was Palm Sunday. Yeah. From the grave, three days later, can I get a witness? So many people, my brothers and my sisters, played major parts in this drama. Mm -hmm. There was the finicky crowd. There was Pilate who could not make up his mind. Uh -huh. There was Judas who betrayed him. Uh -huh. 
the religious leaders who felt threatened uh, by yes. Jesus, yes. the disciples who deserted him, and even the criminal who was released instead of Jesus, yeah. Barabbas and the two criminals who were crucified with Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I believe that if we were honest with ourselves, we could be having some of those for that. That movie was entitled The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. It was starring old Clint Eastwood, which was about three men. One was good, one was bad, and one was just plain ugly. This evening, there was another group of three men who were hanging on crosses together 2,000 years ago. One was good, one was bad, and one was just plain up. Over 2,000 prophecies are already fulfilled, spoken hundreds to thousands of years before they ever happened. Am I right about it? One is a prophecy in Psalm 22. It's about the way Jesus was going to die. By crucifixion was not even used at that time. This was almost 1,000 years before Jesus was crucified. Right. And the normal way to punish Jewish black at that time, somebody said stone. Oh. The psalm said he would be on the cross in the daylight hours, uh -huh. as well as in the dark, and his hands would be pierced. Uh -huh. He would be surrounded by people who mocked him and this is exactly what happened to Jesus. God, let's see him deliver him. Can I get an amen? And you know, this is exactly what the mocker said to Jesus when he was on that old rugged cross. Yeah. I don't know about you, but can you imagine a person a thousand years before it happened wow. describing exactly what people were going to say what was going to happen to yeah. Jesus hanging on that cross. It absolutely boggles my little finite mind. The song even said that the people would go down for his clothing. Yeah. Somebody say not a word to this. It's not something that Jesus could do himself. Come on now. Some were fulfilled by Jesus himself. Some were fulfilled by the religious leaders who hated Jesus. And some were fulfilled by the Roman soldiers. And one was fulfilled by God the Father when he made it dark from yeah. noon. Is everybody with me tonight? Yeah. Yeah. So our text tells the story yeah. of the original, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. The three men are being led to be crucified. We don't know what these criminals did, but apparently they were caught, convicted, and sentenced. Oh, that was the death of a criminal. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you a little bit about the good, the bad, and well, the ugly. So let me start with the ugly. <laughs> the thief on the left was ugly. <laughs> ugly is bad on steroids. It was just beyond. He committed serious crimes, and now he was hanging on the cross 
to God. Don't you know we all have sin? Yeah. I didn't say that, but that's what the Bible says. Yeah. We come to God and the man in the middle yeah. who was good. Yeah. Yeah. Do we take responsibility for our bad decisions? Do we try to blame others for our bad mess up? Do you see the difference between these two men? Yeah. Both but only one made it to heaven that day. Yeah. I think we can shout right there. Yeah. All by myself. Yeah. He was bad, but he asked for forgiveness. Yeah. Jesus forgave him yes. and invited him to heaven that very day. Yeah. He didn't have to wait till the morning time. He didn't have to think about it, but he was sent to die. Yeah. How could this have happened? How could he go from being the Messiah on Palm Sunday? to blaspheme on Thursday and crucified on Friday, Sister Owens. Well, I believe that there were many reasons. Uh, yeah. One was uh -huh. The other was confusion among the people as to what the Messiah was really supposed to do. But the truth of the matter, my sisters and my brothers, is that Jesus came for this very same purpose. Yeah. He came to be the sacrifice of a new life. Is anybody glad that they have a chance for a new life? One life that's free from bondage. Can I get a witness? We know he was good because after he died, somebody, and we are told that he rose again. That hope him. He rose from the grave because he overcame the curse. And so somebody say today, today he is still alive. Yes. And offering to him any other question before us tonight is, which one of these two men on either side of Jesus are you? Something to ponder about for real, for real. The two men on the other side of Jesus both had a chance to be forgiven of their crime and their sins. But only one asked for forgiveness. Only one in the middle was the only chance of for salvation. The other was blinded by his pride and his anger. Lord, I feel like preaching that said that people can be so close to Jesus and still not get it. Lord have mercy. This is in problems. I'm going to take my seat for real. Are you know us bad? You will be in paradise. Is anybody glad that they can say that Jesus can tell you Come on, let's give it up. That's the Joanne Talley, Divine Christian Ministry. The good, the bad, and the ugly. My, 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 my. Thank you again, Pastor Michael Reed, for sharing. Thank you, Pastor Joanne Talley, for being with us tonight. And I don't know about you all, but I'm being blessed. Yeah. Pastor Stephen Tucker is going to come with our third word tonight. And as he comes, we're going to ask Reverend Kenneth Bond if he would come to the pulpit or come to the seat. Pastor Stephen Tucker is going to come with the light and we a blessing to have him with us. Let the church say amen. amen. Love it is so good yeah. it is. to stand before you today. Yeah. I want to give God praise for my friend and my brother, Pastor yeah. Nathan. Yeah. We're trying to catch him, but... <laughs> Like each year. But we, we salute you. We praise God for you. We thank God for the righteous church of God. Yeah. 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 God bless you today. We thank God for all of you. And I thank God for the privilege to be able to stand before you with this. Third word, 
from the cross. That comes from the Gospel of John, 19th chapter. And I want to begin reading at verse number 25 from the King James Version. And it reads as follows. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, yeah. uh -huh. and his mother's sister, Mary, mm -hmm. the wife of Cleopas. <coughs> then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Yes. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. If I were to pin a tag for this message, I would entitle it Taking a Deeper Look. Well, well. Raise your hand. The text says, in describing just who all heard Jesus uttered these words. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. Mm -hmm. was one of the two men walking on the road to Emmaus, whom Jesus confronted after his resurrection from the dead. I mentioned this only because the Bible thought it was important that God always has its witnesses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. There's a Word, preacher. And in this third cry from the cross, Jesus is acting as his own executor. Jesus is making preparations for two of his most treasured assets, his mother and John, the disciple who loved him. And why not make preparations for his mother? we live and also when we die. While Jesus lived, his mother was proud of him. And even if she is proud of him. What a horrible thing to witness the death of your own child. The only thing worse for Mary than witnessing the death of her own child is to witness how Jesus is that they found him in the temple with the doctors and the elders. And when his mother questioned him about his strange disappearance and why he had put all of that stress and worry on his parents, Jesus replied, did you not know that I must him you remember when there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee? Yeah. And at the reception, they ran out of wine? Talk, sir. When Jesus showed up, his mother confronted him with the problem. She knew by this time that her son could handle the situation. She was so proud of him by this time that she said to the guests, just do whatever he says. And Jesus turned the water into wine. And the wedding celebration continued. I pause right here to raise one question before I take my seat. And that question is, how many of us can say that we have made our mothers proud? Can I repeat that question? How many of us can say that we have made our mothers proud? Pride. How many of us are guilty of bringing shame on our mothers? How many of us are guilty of ignoring and forgetting what our mothers have done to get us to this point in our lives? 
How many of us are guilty of ever cursing at your mother? How many of us are guilty of ever lying to your mother? Or deceived, guilty of forsaking your mother in her elder years? Not having time for her in her elder years, not checking on her in her elder years, and not caring about what she needs. I am so glad today that God has given me a daughter who cares about her mother, who spends time with her mother. Jesus than to look. Behold means more than to notice. Behold transcends all of those first impression definitions. Yes. It means to perceive through sight. It means to perceive through the spirit. Yeah. It means to take a deeper look. Ah. Every now and then we need to behold yeah. the medical miracles he has performed in our body. Every now and then we need to behold the mess we were in and God brought us out. Every now and then, we need to behold the stuff that God has delivered us from. Every now and then, we need to behold the drugs that he took out of our hands. Every now and then, we need to behold the alcohol that he took away from us. He kept us sitting in a one same world. Every now and then, how God has kept us humble, has kept us in perfect peace. Jesus says, Mother, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. But more than that, behold what I'm getting ready to do. Of God. It's a deeper responsibility. It's a deeper call. Being a child of God means more than coming to church. It's more than just singing in the It's more than wearing a around your neck. It's more than carrying a Bible in your hand. It's deeper than all of that. That's why when we come to the house of God, we should come with some deeper praise. The Bible says, Behold, Spirit, and all Christians, and your old men in your dream dream. The Bible says, Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor strip, nor shoes for your journey. The Bible says, Behold, the last son the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. For we are now the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, that we shall be like him. For we shall see him. As he is. I don't know about you.
Junior with our fourth word. He's had a long day today, and yet he's here tonight. And Pastor Ken and greet the people of God with our fourth word. Just before we come, you can go to the RCG Facebook page, and you'll have all the pictures of our preachers tonight. Amen. If you're happy in your Lord, once you put your blessed hands together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for my friend, amen, and uncle to me, amen, and pastor Nathaniel Butler, amen. Come on, let's show your love for him, brother, amen, amen, amen. To his wonderful wife, Mr. Lady Butler, I've been loving them since I was yay high, amen. Thank God for them, amen. And thank God, good to see you as well once again, church, amen. You look good, amen. Look at him and say, neighbor, I know I look good. It's not the Maybelline, amen. But it's Jesus inside of me, amen. Come on, y'all, let's see you in the Amen. My assignment tonight, amen. I have already enjoyed all the preachers and pastors before me. Come on, let's show your love for them, amen. 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 One thing about me, I enjoy preaching, but I love to hear great preaching, amen. Amen. I enjoy to hear great preaching. Ain't no hate or rain in me, amen. And Heavenly Father, we thank you on today for who you are, for your kind, your majestic. We ask our God that you hide your servant behind the cross. Give me preaching power, give me preaching the power and demonstration of your spirit. Have your way on tonight. We are in faith, and we already claim the victory in faith. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Our heart, soul, and mind says, Amen. Is your city there looking at your name? Excuse me. If you're sitting there looking at your name, look at your name and say, Neighbor. I was shaken, but I was a few celebrities, two of them, that draw my conclusion on tonight as I thought about the brother in Baltimore, Freddie Gray, who was killed uh, by supposedly, I'm not going to say that, but was supposedly killed. Uh, uh, a few months ago, rather, we just dealt with uh, George Floyd, amen, and how those who allegedly, amen, killed him were held accountable for his crime, for their crime rather. And as I thought about that, I thought about the injustice that was served on Jesus, the conflict that they had to deal with. But the New Testament showed us the comfort of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, he said that he would leave us a comforter when he left. In the Old Testament, that the Old Testament concealed, but the New Testament revealed. We notice here that in the Old Testament, that uh, the sheep died for the shepherd. But in the New Testament, the shepherd died for the sheep. His end was shining rather than the S U N. We see here on, on tonight of this prophetic uh, position that Jesus is in. But before I get into the text, I must ask you tonight what do you do in your darkest hour? What words come out your mouth in your darkest hour? Do you turn to the world system? Do you turn to things like Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, or do you turn to Jesus who still the light of the world? My question tonight to you also is that we see here the prophetic position of Jesus on the cross. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whose shall believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. We see here the position to you and I is not a position that is likable to any human being. But we think about the positions in life that you and I go through. We don't like the position. We don't like the pain. I found out the Bible said that many are the afflictions of the That's righteous. Right. That's right. But God will deliver us out of all. Yes. Many of us here tonight, you have a testimony inside of you. You know how I know you got a testimony because it comes out through your shout. And a shout is nothing more than an outward expression because of an inward experience. That's right. I, 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 I know growing up as a lad, I, I used to look around and see folks shout, and I used to say to myself, Pastor Butler, I said, Why do the shout? They would tell me, he said, Just keep living, son. You'll find yourself shout. But I find myself shouting just seeing Jesus or Jesus in me because there is something great and sacred. David, David was on the run. Yes, that's 
But David still was able to give God a position. He didn't like where he was. He didn't like what was going on. And a lot of fact, we don't, we don't like the things that happen in our life. We don't like to suffer. We don't like to go through pain. We don't like to go through the things of things passed out. We don't like to deal with the hardships of life. But I found way, but look at God's glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. As I look at you tonight, a lot of us, we don't look like what we've been through. I said, we don't look like what we've been through. Truth be told, sometimes you got to tell it just like it is. I don't like the position that I am. I don't like where I am, God. Just be honest with God. Yeah. Next point. Yeah. That God knows our position. Yeah. But here we, have, we see in the text, we see what? The condition of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Where is Jesus? Jesus where? Is on the cross. What? Being crucified. Where? At the almost done. First Peter talks about he put on, he bore our sins on where? On the tree for black. Then you and I can live unto righteousness. The condition on the cross, the condition of you and I is that we have to carry the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Because God said, he said, even though that you have a garment of sorrow, Because God has not forsaken us. God has not let us down. God has, in other words, God is telling you all tonight is that we have to come to a place tonight where we shake the devil off. And that's the problem. We don't shake the devil off, but we let the devil come in. Set at our table. Eat our food. And go to bed. The Bible said if you resist the devil, he will what? He will flee. I'm almost done. Not only that, there we see the position, we see the condition, but what? We see here what? The Great Commission. Yes. Yes. The Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? It's the commission to the church is what? Is that proclaim the message of peace, of reconciliation to the world. My problem with that is that the church has got the way from yes. preaching the gospel. Yes. Uh, churches yes. now become to preachers yes. a place like what? The Apollo. Yes. Yes. Who can hollow the longest? Yes. Who can preach the longest? Yes. How many get the fight? But I'm going back to Baltimore anyway. Yes. And the Bible said that we ought to preach the yes. gospel yes. in the church of God. Yes. What is the church being yes. in? It's called the Ecclesia. Yes. Those that are God had to pull you out of the nightclub. Yes. He had to pull us out of promiscuity because you weren't going to let that man or woman go. Go ahead and take that marijuana from you because now you got a medical car you think is leaving or what? With God's presence. For the Bible said that in God's presence is the fullness of joy. And in my hand will be his pleasures forevermore. In other words, we ought to learn what are we going through. We know how not to wear our burdens and look, walk around with our head. I'm not saying that you got to have a vampire cross around your neck. But folk ought to know that I am a child of God. That no matter what's going on in my life, I'm shouting and praising God. Somebody said, well, how in the world can you praise God? She said, well, I'm glad that you asked. She said, how do you spell jump? She said, I spell it J-U-M-P. She said, that's how you spell it. But I spell it Jesus. Understand my praise. Is there anybody here that God has darkness? He eliminates. And when I'm good, he appreciates. I said, what's his name? His name is Jesus. Who is he? He's a living of the valley. He's the bright
I didn't get no roses out. I didn't get no flowers out. And I told the Lord, I said, I'm going to tell you something. He's the road of shine. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright. I said, bright. I said, bright. And Lord, it's personalities are different. God speaks to us differently. But he also heals all of us collectively. And the Holy Spirit also ministers to us. So we thank God for our four preachers, Pastor Michael Reed, Pastor Joanne Talley, Pastor Stephen and Barney. We thank them so much. Yeah. yeah. We, are, we really want to make this part here real short. We don't want things to cool off. We want to keep the spirit of the Lord moving. If you're able tonight, we're going to just take an offering. As a matter of fact, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about nobody bothering us tonight. Or you can come around. We're going to do this real quick, you all. So that we our choir is going to give us an appropriate message. We're going to have prayer in just a minute. I'm going to thank God for my sister, Jackie Edwards, all the way from New York tonight to share with us in service. And my sister-in-law, Pinky Butler. You can all stand if you like. Patsy, thank you for serving on the door tonight. Just come around. We can do this real quick, please. You can write a check. You can go online to our teaching ministries. Thank you so much for your gift of love. You've done for me. may not come back in dollars, but it'll show up in ways. 
that they would remember that you are rewarding them because of the principle of giving, sowing, and reaping. Thank God all that you receive tonight will be used for the building of your kingdom. We thank you for those that gave. We thank you for those, oh God, that so cheerfully. We pray for those that have suffered income loss in this period. We pray, God, that you'll meet every need. Thank you, God. Multiply these gifts so that we can be a blessing to your name. We thank you in Jesus' name. Washington Baptist Theological Dean of Washington Baptist Theological Seminary Dean of Chapel. And we're so glad to have her with us tonight. Dr. Owens, greet God's people. Amen. like this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, mm -hmm. saith, I thirst. Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the subject of the paradoxes of a thirsty moment. Uh -huh. The paradoxes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh of a thirsty moment. Of the seven final utterances that Jesus spoke from the cross, his fifth statement is the shortest and appears to be the simplest to understand. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yet his words, I thirst, are power packed with last The words indeed have an obvious meaning, but if you compare his words with how he lived his life, and with the whole counsel of God's word, there's a powerful message here for us. Yeah. So the challenge is that we must not just hear his word absurd or self-contradictory proposition that when investigated or explained may prove to be well-founded or true. Mm -hmm. Doubtless, Jesus experienced extreme thirst while being crucified. He would have lost a substantial quantity of the bodily fluid of the seminary. We can understand him saying, I, I, but this one third of the triune council who created all water more than 6,000 years ago now says to us, I'm thirsty. Well, he who was able to walk on top of water, yeah. turn water into wine, to make the earth fruitful. The sea is his, he made it. All the fountains and springs are of his digging. Yes. The poured out streams that run among the hills, the torrents rushing down the mountains, the flowing rivers which enrich the plain, all are manifestations of water. And was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Yes. And so he can now cry in this fainting voice. Mind you, Get it twisted. He did not give up his attributes of omnipotence, yeah. omniscience, or omnipresence. Uh -huh. Because to give up any part of his divine nature would have mean that he would have ceased being God. That's right. Uh -huh. What he gave up was the independent excellent touch with the feelings of our infirmity. But he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. But not only it shows us he's sympathetic, but he's a scriptural savior. Yes. Yes. The lamentation of David in Psalm yes. 69, 21 had to be fulfilled. That they would give me what yeah. He's also a sufficient savior. When Luke 16, our Lord talks about a man who died and went to hell. Well. He woke up in the torment of hell and began to beg, can anybody? Yes, uh -huh. Somebody just come and dip your finger and suffer for bearing the sins of the world. It was after this. Yeah. He was forsaken. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was after this. Uh -huh. yeah. His hands and his feet were pierced. It was after this. Uh -huh. 
They divided his clothes among them and cast lots for his robe. But after this, he had Moses and Elijah and were talking to Jesus. They were discussing about the death that would be accomplished in Jerusalem. It's happening right now. Luke then says, Jesus says to his disciples, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and I'm distressed until it's accomplished. So you it was it accomplished. After this moment and this accomplishing moment, the verse lets us understand that this was an articulation mm -hmm. of this thirsty moment. Yeah. Yeah. As we hear this four-letter word, we're constrained to say of our Lord, no man ever spake. Victory died. Yeah. When Jesus spoke, yeah. Jairus' daughter was healed from an undertaker's labor was voided just before he turned our sheriff road into harmony. Amid the anguish of all the spirit of his last words here, they proved that this Christ remains fully every word in every act of this Christ that Jesus was simply saying to you, I am who I say I am. Amen. He was proven to be really man. He suffered pains which belong to manhood. Angels don't suffer thirst. Phantoms, as some call them, don't suffer in this fashion. But Jesus really suffered. He thirsted because he wanted us to know that he was willing to condescend to our level. History is a story of God coming to us and condescending himself to our level. And the first sin, when God came and looked for those first citizens of the garden and said, where are you? Yeah. It happened in the days of Abraham when God shared a lunch of meat and milk under the shade of a tree. It happened in the days of Moses when God met him. Mass, God on the cross. Not one with a sponge thrust in his face and a spear plunged in his side and dice rolling around in his face. Jesus was and is the omniscient God who knows everything, including the 330 some prophecies concerning his Messiahship. But he was also a man who endured all these things. The things we see when I press the point that he was God. 100% God. But he was also 100% man. He was man enough to be born in a stable. But he was God enough to be born of a virgin. Yeah. He was man enough to come as a helpless little baby, but he was God enough that shepherds and wise men would make their way to worship him. Yeah. He was man enough to borrow a ship to get to the other side, but he was God enough to step out the ship and walk on the wall. He was man enough to fall asleep in the hull of the ship, but he was God enough to get up and speak to the winds and the rain and take peace. He was man enough that we saw him. He's thirsty, but he's the philosopher's end to the search for wisdom. He's thirsty, but he's the theologian's end of the search. He's thirsty, but he's the poet's supreme standard. He's thirsty, but he's the end of my isness, and the all of my oughtness, and the unlawful root of everything that I am today. He's my justifier. Yeah. He's my strength and my great position. He's my part of faith. He's my friend when I'm friendly. He's my Theological Seminary Dean of Resurrection yeah. Bible Church with our six words tonight. All of our preachers have been magnificent, they've been prophetic, they've been effective, and we thank you yes. so much, Pastor. He was thirsty. <laughs> six words. He was thirsty. Bless him, God. It is finished. Bless him, God. Thank you, 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 God. Th
blessing. In the marvelous uh -huh. working name yes, yes. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For it's in Him that we live and move and we have our very day. To Dr. Butler, my friend, 20, I'm 30, I'm sorry. John 19. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, mm -hmm. he said, mm -hmm. it is finished. Uh -huh. And he bowed yes. his head through your already blessed word. My God. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 A divine delay. For us, delays are part, or you encounter an unexpected detour. Whatever the situation might be, all these things have been called delay. Yeah. Having to deal with delays can be frustrating. Delays can cause us to sometimes become angry and anxious and even desperate. It is beyond our power and ability yes. to do anything yes. about it. Yes, Lord. It is beyond our power to either fix the delay yes. or manage the delay. My God. And, and in our text this morning, this is my. In John chapter 19 and 30, I get a sense that there is a delay happening mm. at Calvary. Teach, yes. Pastor. Yes, sir. But this delay is not completely bruised and battered. Tell the story. He's struggling to breathe. Yes. The agony of the suffering is too painful for many of those around the cross to even behold. Yes. The end of his earthly life is ever so close. My God. Yet he is the uh, delaying death. You know, I mean, he's already finished preaching the gospel uh -huh. to the poor. Yeah. He's finished healing the broken body. Yeah. He's yeah. already delivered those who are captives. Yeah. He's finished recovering sight for the blind. He's waiting on the man. Yeah. Wait a minute. Matthew's gospel says that Jesus has already been given. They tried to give him vinegar to drink, but he's not interested. John says in verse 30, in the first word, he says, that means that there is a divine appointed time yes, when? for Jesus to receive the vinegar. Yes, Lord. There is a divine time yes. where Jesus is to accept the vinegar. Yes. There is a divine appointed time that he will embrace the vinegar. Yes. But the vinegar he will reject came from the unrighteous hand. Oh, man tried to force vinegar yeah. into the mouth of the Savior. Yeah. But God laid the vinegar upon the shoulder yeah. of my Savior. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> what did he lay upon Teach. his only begotten? Teach, Pastor. What does the vinegar represent yes. in the passage? Yes, right. Uh, well, in order to understand this, we have to understand the characteristics mm -hmm. of vinegar. Right. Mm. We have to see the vinegar. Yeah, yeah. 
My God. Before Christ died on that cross. My God. Yes. I was saved. Yes. I was a death mm -hmm. that we could not put. My God. And God's justice. Yes. Has sent an each and every one of us. My God. To external, eternal separation from Him. Yeah. So we have to examine. Suffer. That represents my relationship with God before Christ died on me. Yeah. Yes, it was. Sour. Mm. In my sinful state, yes. in your sinful state, we had no relationship with God no, we didn't. because of our soured attitude. Yeah. The stadium to God. I know y'all y'all been saved all your life, but I'm talking about what I used to do. Come on now. Uh, because our sourness of our vinegar mm -hmm. soured our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And there could never be a wholesome relationship. And we know that anything as it comes in contact, yeah. it destroys. Yeah. That's what our behavior was. And that's what our lifestyle used to be before Christ redeemed us. My God, my God. We were like acid in a relationship. We hurt, we had no compassion. We didn't know love. And we didn't even know how to show love. We were filled with pride. Love the world and pleasures that we loved God. Yes. Well, it was my bitter. That he's waiting on. And the last thing about vinegar, vinegar is colorless. I could see right through my skin. My God, my God. We tried to act God. My God. But we had no godly character. My God, my God. Oh, we talked a good guy. My God. But we weren't producing any good fruit. Yes, yes. We were lost. My God. Doomed to die. We were without hope. Yes. We had no direction. Uh -huh. We had no purpose. We had no tomorrow because our parasitic vinegar oh. and our colorless vinegar. And he transferred to his son. My God. My God. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 says that yes. reconciling the world yes. unto himself. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's what he was doing. Yeah. He was waiting yeah. on my yeah. Corinthians says he was made to be seen. Yeah. For us. Yeah. Who knew no, no sin. sin? For our sin. Yeah. In his own body. Yeah. On a tree. Yeah. That we should be dead to uh -huh. sin. And by his right we yeah. are. Yeah. 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 Divine delay. Yeah. yeah. He dies before receiving the penance. Yeah. We were all be lost. Be lost. Yeah. But because he delayed, yeah. the other laid upon him. He will bear the sins of the world. Thank you, God. That he waited. And he took my sin. Yeah. Yes. And your spirit. Yeah. yeah. It is been nailed it to me. Yeah. 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 And since that time, it is been. he gave us liberty yeah. and freedom. We're not what we used to be. My God. My God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're not what we used to be. My God. So my brothers and sisters, as John says, when Jesus there came, had received, received the vinegar. Have your pastor good morning. Have your praise.
Resurrection Bible Church. Pastor George Austin. Thank you, Dr. Edna Owens. Appreciate you so much, Dr. Pastor George Austin. Thank you so much. CG Social Sanctuary. Thank you for staying with us. We appreciate you so much. We're coming up on our final word for tonight from Pastor Rodney Teal from Jerusalem Baptist Church. Have you all enjoyed service tonight? I know media, but we are here tonight. And just before Pastor Teal comes, I want to take this moment.